Hello, I'm Pat O'Hare, Chief Market Analyst for Briefing.com. Today is Monday, July 28th. Monday was not a good session for stock market bulls, as stocks tumbled 1.9%, settling at session lows after the financial sector was unable to hold on to its opening gains, which in turn prompted a broad-based sell-off. A 1.2% rise in oil prices compounded the selling interest. All 10 of the economic sectors posted a loss on relatively light trading volume. The financial sector did get off to a good start, rising 1.6%, even though news ahead of the opening bell was somewhat negative. Over the weekend, the FDIC shut down two undercapitalized regional banks, First National Bank of Nevada and First Heritage Bank, marking the sixth and seventh failures this year. The bank's deposits were taken over by Mutual of Omaha. The closures do not come as a complete shock, as it is widely expected that more regional banks will fail, although the news certainly did not help bring buyers to the table. The financial sector quickly reversed course as a sharp drop in shares of Merrill Lynch sent the sector tumbling. There was no specific news item to account for the 12% drop in Merrill Lynch, although there are heightened concerns due to some increased options buying in the stock. In late afternoon, Treasury Secretary Paulson and four of the U.S. largest banks announced support for covered bonds. Covered bonds are similar to traditional asset-backed securities, but will remain on the issuer's balance sheet. The announcement did little to please investors, with the financial sector ending the session down 4.5%. The sector is down 11.5% in the last three sessions, yet it is still up 18.5% from its July 15th low. The consumer discretionary sector fell 2.5% as the 1.2% jump in crude oil prices weighed on oil-sensitive names. Oil advanced on reports of unrest in Nigeria. Conversely, the energy sector outperformed on a relative basis with a 0.5% loss, although the sector fell from a session high of a gain of 1.6% as the broader markets slipped. In earnings news, the telecom sector, which dropped 2.3%, underperformed after investors soured on Verizon Communications quarterly results. The company reported slightly higher than expected earnings due to solid wireless growth. Wall Street was concerned, however, with the company's declining landline business and DSL service, as well as the growth rate in its Fios business. Kraft Foods posted a solid gain after the company topped Wall Street's estimate with a 16% increase in second quarter earnings per share. The company was able to offset soaring commodity costs by passing increased prices on to consumers. Conversely, Tyson Foods was not able to pass along its increased input prices, which resulted in a 90% drop in earnings per share, which fell short of expectations. Amgen was the best performing stock on Monday. Wall Street was pleased with encouraging results related to the trial of Amgen's osteoporosis drug. In deal news, private equity firm Colbert Kravis Roberts is going public through a takeover of its struggling European affiliate KKR Private Equity. The Wall Street Journal reports that the company, which will trade on the NYSE as KKR, may be valued between $12 billion and $15 billion. As stocks struggled, Treasuries rallied. The 10-year note rose 21 ticks, sending its yield to 4%. I'm Pat O'Hare for Briefing.com. Thanks for listening and have a good evening.